I'm Spencer Mazik, and joining me now is lawyer turned co founder of an online legal services startup, Matthew Faustman. His company, UpCounsel, is the fastest growing platform for businesses to find, hire, and work with top attorneys. Welcome, Matt. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me, Spencer. So, Matt, tell me, is UpCounsel just a legal equivalent of TaskRabbit, which is a virtual marketplace that allows you to outsource small jobs? So it's actually a little bit more than that. Uh, we definitely have the marketplace component uh, that TaskRabbit has, but I think what makes UpCounsel unique is that we also have this distribution platform uh, that actually assists our attorney community to deliver legal services in a much more efficient way. So what we did is we went into the legal services market and looked at some of the major pain points that a lot of independent and part-time lawyers are having right now to deliver legal services uh, and coupled that with the marketplace that we have right now. So or who exactly are you targeting with this platform? So on the lawyer side, we're really seeking out the independent entrepreneur right now. These are the solo practitioners. These are the stay-at-home parents. These are the people that worked seven, eight years at the Scaddens, the Latham and Watkins, uh, and now you know they've gone off on their own or they've started a family. And so it's really hard for them to actually access the market in an efficient kind of way. And so we felt that a platform like UpCounsel could really assist these people and empower them to access a broader market that's in fact looking for these people. On the business side, we're targeting companies between 1 and 20. Uh, we like to say that you know, the axioms of the world are targeting the Fortune 100 and we're going after the Fortune 5 million. Are you also going after individual client people, perhaps, not just businesses? No, uh, I think what you're referring to is personal law. Uh, or that's the way that we talk about it. It's purely businesses. Uh, my co-founder and I, uh, when we set out to start up Council, we had a passion for helping entrepreneurs and helping small businesses. And I think that manifested itself into us choosing which side of the law that we really wanted to go after and tackle. And I think that's one of the unique things about the legal industry is that it really covers all parts of our lives. And I think that's why it's such a powerful thing, uh, something that we take for granted perhaps here in the States. Uh, and so I think that a lot of companies uh, decide to go after the entire spectrum and they try to go after personal and they try to go after business. And I think from a passion standpoint and also just from a strategic standpoint, we decided that it would be much more effective just to target uh, small and mid-sized businesses. Yeah, it's good to have a niche there, Matt. And you are a JD MBA grad from Santa Clara University. So did you come up with this idea while you were in school? Uh, no, actually, I was working at another company while I was, uh, while I was in graduate school, another marketplace, uh, which I actually shut down before I went to work at Latham & Watkins. Uh, the idea actually came up uh, while I was working at Latham. My co-founder and I, we knew for a long time that we wanted to start a company together, and we had tossed around a number of ideas, and we kept coming back to the legal industry for a couple of reasons. The first one is that we realized that this is a really big problem. Uh, it's a pain point that many people, especially businesses, can uh, empathize with and they understand. Uh, we also saw the problem from both sides of the table. Uh, my co-founder, who is an entrepreneur himself, uh, really hated having to go seek out legal services. He hated the lack of transparency. He hated the inaccessibility of legal services. And he hated the high, uh, the high cost that would result from him seeking out lawyers. And on my side, uh, working as a big firm lawyer, I realized that there was a lot of infrastructure costs that were getting passed on to the client. And so by putting our heads together, uh, we started to realize that we could really cut out a lot of those infrastructure costs all with technology, essentially building the law firm from the bottom up using all technology, but instead of trying to bring people under one roof, unite them uh, throughout the state and throughout the country all through a virtual network. Well, and you said that you and your co-founder had been interested in starting a company for some time, but had you always known that you wanted to start your own business and you just used law school as the path to do so? That's a great question. Uh, so I actually went to law school, I think, for the intellectual uh, exercise that I think is involved in going to law school. Uh, I had had a professor in undergraduate school uh, that had suggested that I, I should go to law school and that I would really enjoy it. And I think that I respected him enough that I thought it was a good choice. But it was actually while I was in uh, graduate school, I think that my, uh, my entrepreneurial itch really started to uh, kind of take hold. And that was the reason that I started the, uh, the first company uh, that I did in graduate school. Um, but I think that it was actually at Latham when I was in their startup practice group 
uh, working with a number of entrepreneurs and venture capitalists that that itch uh, really mm -hmm. started to come back and I think that's really what um, just encouraged me to really take the leap and it was actually uh, during that first year that you know I, I made a decision early on that I wanted to go uh, either jump into an early company or start my own company and so instead of going out and buying a new BMW or upgrading my apartment I actually lived pretty cheap uh, for that first year and so I saved quite a bit of money and because of that I was actually able to live without a salary for the first year while we were working on up counsel and trying to get the product market fit which can take a can take a while well that's great to hear because I was gonna ask you about the expense of going to law school coupled with the expense of starting your own business so you're saying that that was a major concern for you uh, I think that for anyone uh, the debt that you incur while you're in law school and graduate school in general is a concern uh, and whether you're at a big firm or you're working at a, a, another job that isn't uh, in the legal field uh, your student debt is always going to be a, a major concern luckily there are programs there are ways to uh, reduce your student loan payments to uh, to a point where it's actually uh, possible to live without a salary uh, for an entire year but uh, you know, now that I'm actually starting to make a little bit of a salary, uh, those law school debts are definitely uh, looming over my head. So I want to get back to UpCounsel. How do you actually vet the attorneys who offer their services on your site? How do you guarantee to customers that they're going to get good quality legal work? So when an attorney comes on to UpCounsel, we make sure that they have a, uh, a bar number, that they're in good standing with the bar, and they have a requisite uh, amount of experience. And it's around two years right now to actually have access to the platform. Any attorney can come on to UpCounsel and use the tools that we've provided. Essentially, it allows you to start your own virtual law firm in under five minutes. But it's really access to the marketplace where we want to make sure that people are getting access to real lawyers. And from there, we then provide the customer uh, tools to find the best attorney and some of these could be just matching you up to the right attorney but then it's also social proofs it's where you've worked your LinkedIn recommendations and then we also provide something that's pretty unique and that that's ratings for every transaction that you do every time uh, as a lawyer that you do a transaction on up counsel you actually get rated and then what we do is we associate that rating with the type of law that you just practice and that allows us to actually match up the customer and the attorney far better than anything that's out there right now. Well, I actually like that component of UpCounsel, the reviews that tend to follow the attorney throughout their entire career on UpCounsel. So Matt, can you tell us about the bidding process though, which is how attorneys set their rates? Yeah, so the bidding process is actually just one part of the overall infrastructure that UpCounsel provides. For newer customers, it's very valuable for them to be able to submit a job into the UpCounsel platform and then our system goes to work matching up that particular job to our community of attorneys or select members of the, of the attorney community based on their experience and the type of law that they practice. Those attorneys then are invited to the job and they have the opportunity to message back and forth with the client to flesh out the job or provide an hourly or even fixed fee quote. And I think for a lot of people, it starts to provide that upfront transparency that we're used to in purchasing pretty much any other product or service, but which has been pretty absent in the legal industry for a long time. Um, those quotes uh, can change over the course of the relationship, uh, and the attorneys, whenever they have to change those quotes, it's all transparent on a customer's dashboard that they can see uh, as someone is uh, adding time to a particular job. So I think people really appreciate this idea that I know up front what I'm going to be paying for those legal services. Well, and tell us though, how does UpCounsel earn uh, its income and generate income? Do you earn a percentage of the jobs done on the platform? So what we do is actually we make sure that the attorneys get 100% of what they agreed to do the job for. So as an attorney on UpCounsel, if you agree to do a job for $5,000, then you will receive $5,000. What we do is we actually charge a small transaction fee to the customer. Uh, so it's essentially, it's added onto the bill, very transparent. Um, and so what we do is we completely avoid the fee splitting issues and it's like checking out with PayPal in many respects. In fact, we wanted to be so blatant that we weren't touching the attorney's fees that we actually are eating the credit card fees. Yeah, but I'm still curious, how do you actually generate income? <laughs> oh, so it's, no, it's on, it's on those transaction fees. So is, is, it, the, is it 10% of every job that's done? 
So right now it is 10% of every job that's done is added to the bill. Okay. Well, and, uh, and uh, you mentioned this earlier, but I just want to confirm that lawyers, they don't have to pay anything to participate. They can certainly just sign up with up counsel. Is that right? It's 100% free for a lawyer to come on up counsel, uh, set up their own virtual law firm, and then transact in the marketplace. That's, that's correct. And which practice areas would you say come up most frequently now on up counsel? So I think the biggest practice areas involve contract drafting and contract review. Uh, and I think that's just indicative of the business legal uh, space in general. Uh, but IP has become a, a huge area on up counsel as well. Uh, patents are starting to pick up quite a bit. And I think that's really because of where we focus a lot of our energies as far as industries are concerned. Uh, we're heavily focused in the technology industry and also in the real estate industry. And recently we've actually started to see a lot more activity from the legal industry itself. You have a lot of independent lawyers who are um, kind of crippled when it comes to staff or taking on bigger projects. And so UpCounsel allows them to staff up essentially their one or two person firm uh, in a matter of minutes in order to take on larger projects. And then they can scale that down with the same amount of ease. Matt, what you're describing here really does sound like an online law firm. I mean, is that how you would say you would describe UpCounsel? So we can't go as far as saying that we're an online law firm. Um, I think that what we are really is a platform that helps unite kind of the legal industry in many respects uh, and it makes it far more efficient for people to get legal services whether that's a business finding legal services or it's a lawyer who's trying to find another lawyer to help them build their practice. Well, and someone once said to me that every startup should have an exit strategy. Now I don't know whether or not that's true but do you have an exit strategy for up counsel? Uh, not at the moment. Our only strategy right now is to grow as fast as possible uh, and to essentially take up counsel uh, to uh, take up counsel throughout the country and then eventually throughout the world. And where are you now with that growth? How many attorneys would you say that you have on the platform and users as well? So we've had almost 700 attorneys just here in California register for the service and we have 150 attorneys who are actually part of the marketplace uh, in he just here in California. When we first started up Council, we looked at the precedent that was set by other really great marketplaces or distributive work platforms, I think is the best way to describe it, uh, like the Ubers of the world. And they really focused on one particular market and nailed that market before expanding beyond that into new markets where they could essentially repeat what they had done in the, in the last market. And so we've taken the exact same kind of strategy and we've done really well here in California. Our attorney community is growing rapidly, our customer base is growing rapidly, and so we're excited to take up counsel beyond the confines of California. Well, good luck with everything, Matt. Thanks so much for joining us today to tell us a little bit about up counsel. It sounds pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much, Spencer. Really happy to be here. For more information on this or other topics, subscribe to BloombergLaw.com. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Thank you for joining us. Bye, everybody.